One of the most important questions you can ask yourself when you're thinking about buying a smartphone is whether or not it has a good camera. And luckily for all of us over the last couple years, the answer to that question is increasingly yes. So we took the five best ones released this past year. The iPhone 10, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, the Google Pixel 2, the LG V30, and the HTC U11. Now we put them to the test in a whole bunch of different situations, all to figure out which smartphone has the best camera. So we're here in the studio and we're about to take a look at some of the images. I'm joined by James Barham, The Verge's creative director. Thank you, James. Hello. And why don't you give the people an idea of what it is that makes you an expert in this field? Okay, well that's interesting. Um, I've been taking pictures for a, a very long time, but I've been specifically taking pictures with these phones for the past week. I've had pockets full of phones. And uh, if you caught our Circuit Breaker show last week, you'll have seen that we went out and shot some pictures and started comparing them, and then we handed the uh, phones over to you and you've been picked up the mantle and have been doing it ever since. Yes, and we, uh, we decided to pick these phones not only because they're some of the industry leaders in sales and things like that, but they just are the best cameras that are out there as far as the top tier of smartphones that you can buy right now. There are definitely some other competitors that we could have included in this test, but then we would have been here for the rest of eternity. So we're going to be viewing all these photos on a Retina MacBook Pro, but we know that not everybody has access to a screen that's that good, so we're also going to take a look at them in some other settings. We're going to upload some of them to Instagram to see what they look like sort of at the end state of everybody's images mm -hmm. <laughs> these days. Uh, and then we're also going to take a look at them on some of the phone's screens, which is where I think most people probably do the viewing to begin with. The interesting thing is 90% of the pictures you take, you look at on your screen on your phone. Yeah. You're not going to do what we're going to do. So this yeah. is the only way we can really get into these pictures. So what's this one? Where are we starting? All right, so we're going to start with this, which is a, a relatively, uh, you know, it's not the most exciting shot in the world. It's a little, you know, it was a dreary day. That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's sort of a good test. There's a lot of detail in the foreground, in the midground, in the background. Um, and it's a good, I think the biggest example um, coming from this is that... What phone is this one? So, so we're starting with the iPhone 10. Right. Uh, and I think one of the things this particular scene shows more than anything else is the fact that, or is how the different cameras interpret color uh, and contrast. Wow. So jumping to the HTC, the iPhone image is uh, almost a little washed out, but, um, but so, so, sort of not as dark, the darks aren't as dark. Uh, as the HTC, which has like right. really black blacks. Um, take a look at the LG, which is sort of on the iPhone end of the spectrum, where it's uh, you know a little washed out, a little bluer mm -hmm. than the rest of the other uh, the other images. Um, the wow. Note 8 is a lot warmer, which I feel like is something we've come across a lot with, uh, with shooting with these phones. This is really interesting because Samsung is, as I say, everything looks like it's been dipped in tea. Uh, it's <laughs> slightly brown, but. If you click back to the iPhone, it's pretty close. It's a little bit more green yeah. than brown, yeah. but it's definitely in the same kind of color gamut as the, um, yeah, whereas the Samsung, the, whereas the LG HTC, and HTC LG, blue. Yeah. yeah, much more blue. What's and the Pixel? the Pixel, which is this one, which is See? also blue, but like probably maybe the most accurate of like what it actually looked like in that moment. Uh, if my accurate. memory serves. But if you look, it's definitely you look. It's so funny, and like this is the problem with doing these comparisons: is we're, we're gonna be we bounce about, around, yeah. and then you come back to the iPhone. Now, now the iPhone looks awful and green, like, but, and okay. I didn't really notice that before. Okay, so I'm gonna keep interrupting you just because it's <laughs> annoying. But look, if you go to the Pixel, what's interesting about this is the overall thing is kind of that gray blue, like the HTC, like the LG, but look at the color of the cab here, yeah. the water taxi, but also there's still quite a lot of brown here and a lot of brown here. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not pushed so far to the warm end of the spectrum as the uh, Samsung or the iPhone. And I think another way of saying what you just said is that it's there's taking, it's taking all saying. that color information and sort of <laughs> representing it in a, uh, representing all of it better yes. as opposed to, you know, skewing the picture because it's dominated by one particular part of the color spectrum, right? I absolutely. I think that this is a really good it's actually a really good choice of pictures because it's very neutral. Thank you. Of course. Well you know. You know what you're doing. It's very neutral. It's very flat as well. So you've got very even tone from the foreground and the background. And I think that this kind of image really shows up the neutrality of the pixel camera. 
which is, I think, having played around with them myself for a week, I know that you've been playing around, I think that's my immediate takeaway about the Pixel. It is the kind of, in most environments, it's the most neutral. What I wanted to do, uh, and one of the reasons I shot this photo this way, was also to show off the sort of detail uh, capture of all these different smartphones. The big thing that separates all these smartphones and the cameras on them these days is the software processing that mm -hmm. these companies decide to do, and not in like a you know filter white kind of mm -hmm. way. I mean, software processing is in how they're getting the information off the sensor into the JPEG that it shows you, and that process is handled so differently by all these different companies, and it sort of uh, there's artistic judgments being yes. made, and and sort of judgments being made as to like how to like make the photo look because you're going to be looking at it on a smartphone, things like that. I so. think that this is a core point to make at this time. It's like two sides of a coin. Neither side is more valuable than the other, and the two sides of the coin here are the hardware and the software. And I think by bringing it to a screen, we can see exactly not only the hardware decisions that are being made, like two lenses on the iPhone here, mm -hmm. and the software treatment of that to create a final image. So I think it's really important. That's why we want to do real world. We don't want to go down the bench testing route. This is about, <laughs> this is what these pictures look like. Yeah, I mean, the hardware is closer than ever on these, yes. you know, these days. And they're all sort of pushing up against the same physical limitations of mm -hmm. putting a camera in like a space that small on a smartphone. So here's the iPhone's 100% view right. um, of this image. Uh, HTC is a little wider, so you're yes. not getting quite as. These were both shot. This is shot with the wide angle of the iPhone, and you know that only Still camera on the HTC. Good. Still pretty good. Um, you don't get quite no as just quite as much detail there. Right. Um, the LG, Ooh. and this is something I found, and I think we noticed this when we were doing the, yes. the first go around with these. The LG's fine details, especially ones that are in the deep background of a mm -hmm. photo, always seem to have this like aberration. They're always a little bit blurrier. Yep. It doesn't have quite the resolution. Um, and even the sharp bits aren't as sharp. Right. Technical term. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you look at some of the detail in the rope. Right. There's just tons more yeah. here on the iPhone. So much better. Uh, and on the HTC HTC's as well. HTC's really good. Now, Samsung, kind of the same. It sort of blew but some of the focus this here. Whole, this whole crazy yeah. thing with Samsung is it takes sharp pictures and then softens them. Yeah. It just seems like, so kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. And then let's take a look at the Pixel. Which is again, I think like right in the middle. Like, uh -huh. I think the iPhone might make you think it's got more detail there. There's like a little bit more sharpening well, going on, maybe. I also think it's to your point that it's got lighter shadow detail, which right. gives an impression of more detail. Yeah. There, but I also think I think we yeah, have to be honest. Look at the difference there. Like the iPhone is sharper. Yeah. And I think that this as well is is it using both lenses to get the sharpness in the background, or is this just one? I would assume it's just using the, the wide mm -hmm. one, but that's sort of the thing, like one thing we don't know about how Apple uses the dual lens system right now is like we know it will use those two lenses to help the other out uh -huh. like sometimes, but it's not explicit as to how it does that. Right. Um, sort of like we're not totally sure how Google does the software things yep. that it does with HDR Plus. So The other thing I'm going to make here is I've noticed with Pixel, much as I love it, it's very crunchy. It adds a lot of contrast. It's almost, in a Photoshop, we call it a high-pass filter, where it just, you bring out that textural sharpness, and it sometimes goes a little bit crazy with it. Yeah. So I, I, I think the iPhone and the Pixel probably have the best photos here. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to pick a winner, like a winner if we were going to try and do that. The iPhone probably overexposed it just a touch, um, which it, I found it tends to do. Um, but. They're all relatively good. I think the Pixel is probably the best, like down the yes. middle, like representation of what that scene looked like. So. I also think that the Pixel camera is the most photographic. I've said this before, as I think that the files off the Pixel look the most like a camera shot rather than a phone shot. Mm -hmm. What's uh, much, this picture? Much different scenario this time. This is obviously on the subway. This is, uh, you know, sort of low and challenging light, mm -hmm. not the darkest. Uh, situation you'll find because there is a lot of bright sort of LED lighting mm -hmm. in here, um, but lots of variation in the light in the scene, yep. which makes it challenging for a smartphone to handle. And so we have, uh, let's take a quick look. Again, we sort of get different color representations uh, of some of of the scene, like some bluer stuff again from like LG and the Samsung. 
uh, and then the Pixel. That's really funny that the Samsung is so blue. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it took a different tint. I, sometimes when it's reading lights, uh, like the information coming from yeah. like especially LED lights, it, it will cast that uh, color across the scene, I've tended to notice. But um, this one I want to dive right into the details. Yes, um, it, because what's interesting about this shot is if you look at the highlights on these um, pillars, you've got that, it's an overall dark picture with then very brightly lit white areas, which is very hard for a camera to retain that level of detail because it's got to make a choice and the choice is a compromise and it basically lands in the middle. Yeah, it can't I, fit all the information no. in the brightest brights and in the darkest darks of the picture, so it's got to pick something at you some gotta point. It's got to square allegiance to, to one part you of it. You've got to make a choice sometimes. Yeah. So we're going to start with the iPhone, or you're going to... What one are you looking at now? This is the Pixel, and I think what's interesting about what the Pixel did is, is this is like where you almost start to get into the territory of what I was talking about, where uh, it's almost doing a little too much with its HDR, because... I think the point you made is really good about how there's detail uh -huh. in these brights that some of the other, like the HTC missed some of those tiles. Yep. The iPhone missed a lot of those tiles. That's surprising. The Samsung missed a lot of those tiles. So the, the Pixel captured more information yep. in the brights while not losing the information in the darker parts. But look at the detail on the subway map behind. Yeah, that's you can a good almost comparison. read it. Yeah, and the Samsung is fuzzy. The LG looks like it's, it's been painted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the HTC again. The HTC is a little bit wider, um, and so that means like when you're looking at There's fine just, detail, it's it's it feels it's, like it's farther away. It's smudged. And the iPhone did a, a decent job, but, but yeah, the Pixel, yeah, it really does feel like you can read the individual stuff. It's like. very <laughs> clean. There doesn't seem to be, it's almost like in paint, where paint bleeds, the colors bleed. Yeah. These are very kind of restrained and crisp and clear. Right, all Even the paint is within detail. the lines, yeah. which is kind of funny. I think if you if we think of contrast ratio, you know, as a, as a visual thing, that here's a contrast ratio on most of the phones, the Pixel just has a broader gamut. Mm -hmm. It's going to capture more in the dark end of more in the light end and just give you an overall better exposed image. And I'll say, like one of the things that we, I think both you and I were not expecting coming into testing all these um, these smartphones out is that we weren't expecting the HTC oh. to find, like, to, the HTC is as good as the iPhone and the Pixel at in like a bunch of different settings sometimes, right. and and that was something that surprised the both of us. And uh, here is like the, one of the clearest examples of that. Like this image looks a lot like that. Maybe not at the detail level when we zoom way in, but when you look at it sort of zoomed out, uh, it has the same sort of color balance as the Pixel's image. It has the same sort of dynamic range where you know it did lose some of the highlights. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the shadows, like, look, you know, the detail is still here, like we saw in the Pixel image. So, like, the HTC's camera, I don't think it was as consistent. It missed more mm -hmm. than the Pixel did. Um, but when it hit, which is still a lot, uh, it did almost as admirable a job, which yes. I think is really nice to see from a company that made smartphones with great cameras that led the pack years ago. I mean, like, they were the thing that, like, the iPhone was catching up to before it got to the sort of iPhone 4 era. I think it, you are absolutely right. It was definitely the surprise of the test. I had no idea it was going to be as consistent. So this is another sort of challenging scene for a smartphone camera because we've got, again, some bright brights, some dark darks, and a lot of intricate, like, lines, little, mm -hmm. a lot of fine detail, which is something that's harder uh, for, you know, underpowered phones to resolve uh, and a lot software. of very close tones yes and uh, what do you mean by that a lot of close tones so if you look at it overall it's it's the squint test if <laughs> yeah. you squint and you can see what disappears it basically turns into bluey gray at the top gray green mm. here with black of the branches and the roof line okay. so it's it's very um, uniform and then as you said those bright warm uh, lights hanging in the tree, which confuse everything. So I mean, I think the you know the Pixel, again, did the best job of keeping the highlights from being blown out. Uh, maybe a little too dark overall. Was it when you look at this scene? You were there. You took this pictures. How? Which is the one that's most like the scene? <laughs> well, it's to definitely your not eye. the iPhone. The iPhone missed it like crazy. It <laughs> overexposed a bunch of stuff. Uh, it is green again, which is like I, I think the iPhone's got a really great camera, and I think it's probably one of the two best, you know, like yeah. maybe behind the Pixel, um, the Pixel 2. 
uh, but it still has this tendency to, to make it's green to put this green cast on things, yeah. which is just a really weird uh, thing that they, I don't know why that's never been hammered out of the system. Uh, HTC probably did one of the most, if not the most, admirable job. It lost yes. some of the details and the highlights. Um, but the color throughout, it doesn't have as much of a green cast. There is separation in the colors yes. down at the bottom of the photo, like you were talking about. Like you can squint and see some difference in the green and the brown here. Yeah. And, um, whereas the LG Ooh. is just a little muddy. I mean, it's the same deal as we've seen in some other photos where, like, I mean, I think it did a pretty good job resolving some of the detail back yeah. here, but it's not as good as maybe something like, I don't know, maybe I'll just eat my words. Um, you know, it's, I guess it's about on par with what the HTC did there. And Samsung is, again, like, pretty even. I think the iPhone missed more than any one of the other yeah. ones did a better job with but it. But if you but zoom into the Samsung, I, I, we're going to see this smeary effect again. And it's like in the roof yeah. line and everything. It just looks, everything's got a wash over it. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But and the color is bleeding. I mean, look around here. You can actually see the blue mm -hmm. is bleeding around. Let's take a look at what that did in the iPhone. It's much yeah, the iPhone did a way better job with that. You can better. actually see detail in this like grassy thing, whereas apparently that all got lost but it pretty also, much in the, in the Samsung. If you zoom in, you can also see on the iPhone how much artifacts it's adding from the sharpening. What we wanted to do, though, with, uh, with some of these pictures and with this one in particular is look at it in an even more neutral platform um, than maybe this screen, which yes. is Instagram, uh, because, you know, how much do these differences matter if mm -hmm. they're all being funneled through Instagram's compression algorithm, which, right. which is probably removing a lot of these, uh, these differences in the first place. So we have uploaded a few of them here. I think the one where it's showing me the most of what Instagram is doing is we zoom way in here on uh, the right. LG versus like what we saw here. Let's get to the same spot. You know, the LG, which we knocked a little bit for resolving right. some of this detail, like still was able to get some of yeah. these like the finest little branches here, whereas like in the <laughs> Instagram, oh no, that's as big as it's going. All right, you can see it here. Yeah. Like I'm looking at this spot right here where, you know, that's a nest of sort of information and, like with all these branches and twigs. Right. And here it's just like, it's been blurred together. It's, there's all these artifacts from the compression. And, yep. uh, and but it, you're also noticing it in the shadow data on the trees, is if you, if you jump back to the original picture, look how yeah. crisp the separation of the different colors of bark are. Okay. Then once you get into, yeah. this is kind of again, it's almost like it's stripping some of those colors out. It's making a yeah. decision of, this is this kind of brown, this is this kind of green. Yeah, and so what matters about that is, you know, we take a look at, let's say, whoa, here, the HTC, which we said handled the scene really well, right? Mm-hmm. That actually looks worse than yeah. the LG does on Instagram. <laughs> it lost so much more detail in the sort of back uh, branches of this tree that it, you know, the, the HTC photo uploaded on Instagram on the HTC phone viewed on the web now to sort of give it a neutral platform looks worse than the LG photo uploaded through right. Instagram on a, the LG phone. Like, I, that's a weird thing that, like, it's stripping more information out of the file from the HTC phone than the LG one, which, like, apparently had less to compress. I don't know. I think looking at them, I would sum it up like this, is it's the platform kind of, it's like an amplifier for whatever the trait of the image is. So if the image is slightly soft, it's going to make it softer. If the image is slightly contrasty, it's going to make it even more contrasty. Mm. Um, if it's slightly warm, it's going to make it even warmer. It just seems to take these decisions and push it that much further. As you said, you know, we saw that slight softness in the HTC image, and that's now much more pronounced when we look at it through Instagram. What was the pixel yeah. one like on Instagram? Uh, let's find that. You see, it's made it flatter and darker. Yeah, it looks even darker and moodier yep. than it does sort of on this screen here. At least here, there's some information in the shadows. Yeah. It doesn't feel quite as like dark and dour. And here, it it's it's subtle, but it yeah. there's definitely a little bit more here that uh, that was lost in sort of the dark end. I definitely think that's my takeaway from this: is if you have a slightly dark picture, you're going to put it up, and it's going to be is just going to push it that much further right? in whatever direction. Well, because, I mean, you think about it, like, all right, if you have a slightly blurry photo or if you have a slightly dark mm -hmm. photo or a slightly bright photo, whatever, you, like you were talking about, 
it's exacerbating those things because they are there because of a lack of information, yes. right? Like the photo is blurry because it did not resolve the information to make it sharp. It Quite. is dark because it did not capture enough information in the shadows to bring out the detail. And so it's just going to sort of exponentially run down that path as you run it through Instagram. If you were to upload some of these, you know, the HTC, which was a little soft, if you uploaded to Instagram a couple more times, I'm sure it would just be like one big foggy image by the time you did that. I mean, a, an interesting exercise would be to actually then process the image before you upload it. So you start, if you know it's going to block up, you fill in some shadow detail. If you know that it's going to go too bright, you bring the highlights back or push the color up. I mean, I think that that's the other side to all of these images. There's the, this is what the image looks like. Now, what do you want the image to look mm -hmm. like? And I think we've said that at the end of the day, these phones take really, really good pictures. And a lot of these choices are going to come down to what kind of pictures do you like? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you like brown fuzzy pictures, then the Samsung is for you. I mean, <laughs> let's just put that out there. And clearly, a lot of people do. They sell a lot of phones. Mm -hmm. um, just like if you want to, if you know, if you are going to live with the fact, if you get an iPhone, you're going to have to live with the fact that it overexposes sometimes. Yeah. The question then is, does this change the opinion of like which camera did the best in this situation? I think maybe it does. I mean, I think the best photo out of the cameras looking at it on the screen was probably the HTC. Right. Uh, and. On Instagram, it's the one that sort of got wrecked the most in the process, <laughs> and so I, I wouldn't agree with that. I would say, like, uh, n not the Pixels, I, I guess the LG seemed to have held up. Well, I don't know. No, it's... But what's that one? That's yeah, the, the LG. LG. Yeah. I, so, mean, I mean, it lost, like we said, it lost some detail in this, like, one nesty area, but it actually, like, it wasn't as fuzzy as some of the other ones wound up being, and the color was pretty medium to begin with, so it just wound up looking kind of medium in the end. The problem with, once you start viewing the images on Instagram and saying, well, now you've seen the image on the screen and now you've uploaded it, which do you think handles that the best? Mm. The problem is, the answer is, it depends on the picture. I think that if you're going to upload a bright sunny day with a deep blue sky and a bright red car and a big green bench, then the brightness of the iPhone is probably going to make that look amazing. Yeah. I think if you've got muted colors, grain, shadow detail, backlit, which we've experimented with before, and the, and the Pixel 2 XL or Pixel 2 is going to kill it. I mm -hmm. mean, it's just by far the winner. Yeah. I think the HTC is still the average one, and I, and I think these kind of tests are very much, we're trying to find definitive answers. And the, actually, the answers are, this is probably the best, maybe. But then you could compensate for it. So where do you stop? You could say, well, if I have an iPhone, I know I'm going to kind of push the, push the color balance well, I, a little bit. Redder. I think that's the point where you, where you lose people, right? Like, right. Most people aren't going to do that to try and compensate to make the photos look better. They just want it to work. And so like, at that point, you, know, you, you just have to know that Instagram's going to sort of, again, skew or enhance the yeah. problems that you're already dealing with. Yeah. I mean, I think the answer is that overall, you know where you are with the iPhone. You know where you are with the Pixel 2. Yeah. I the think inconsistency on the other three is means you're probably going to know a little bit less. I think that's the thing. I think that you can compensate and take into account what the iPhone 10 and what the Pixel 2 are going to do, and they will consistently always do that. Okay, so here's another sort of weird <laughs> test that we want to use to show like how differently these photos can look, how much differently so sort of, right. Can I just say this? <laughs> yes. So, you know where I said we should get into the weeds? Yeah. Oh, so God. we're going to get into the weeds <laughs> with pictures of weeds. I'm leaving. Is that matter? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So this is what we're looking at right now is a, a, a picture that was taken by the Pixel 2 XL on the Pixel 2 XL screen and on the iPhone 10 screen. Same picture. Uh, same picture. Um, and uh, already, I don't know, it's, it might be hard to see in the video, but like already it is insanely wild. different. It's insanely different, yeah. Um, you know, we don't have like True Tone or anything t turned on. These are just sort of, we've got the Pixel 2 XL in the the screen mode that actually matters, mm -hmm. whatever one they call it, the one that doesn't have dumb colors. Well, the, uh, no, the, the right one. <laughs> yeah, the right one. And then the, the iPhone just sort of in its standard mode. And the iPhone is interpreting the Pixels photo as like, 
almost kind of dull, uh, you know. It's doing it deliberately. Very, yeah, right, it's <laughs> very flat, like there's not as much contrast. Yep. Um, it's still a good photo. It looks like it's, you know, representing some pretty good detail. But here's something crazy, right? We've been saying up to this point how the iPhone makes everything look green. And the one color it's stripped out <laughs> of the yeah. Pixel's image is the green has gone. Yeah, in comparison, the Pixel is just like lush and beautiful yeah. and it's got all this vibrant color. It's just gone. It just looks like this is normal mm -hmm. and this is after a few days when the water's gone and it's gone a little bit brown. <laughs> so what I want to do is get in a little bit closer so we can see some of the detail. I'm having trouble because... The, Apple hates Google? Yeah, the Google Drive app <laughs> won't let me zoom in any further <laughs> on the iPhone. Um, but, you know, one thing I will say is that, you know, they're not representing the, or resolving the detail any differently. Re this is really just about yeah. color, the difference yeah. here. Um, and I don't know, like, I do pull back, kind of look like the way that the pixels looks on yes. the pixel, but I, the sort of photographer in me is looking at this one and saying like, that's a more realistic image because like, I was there shooting this though? picture. That, those is greens it? were not that green and that blue was not that blue. Like that is, an aggressive reproduction by Google and in, in sort of... I don't want to live in the real world, I want to live in the better world. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, let's take a look at the, the other iPhone. Way around. Yeah, the iPhone's photo on the Pixel. Okay. Okay, so the other way around now, we've got the iPhone X's photo from this scene on both of these screens, and it's doing the same thing. I mean, it, yeah. it's like almost the exact same differences. The iPhone is almost like it's making it more neutral. Yeah, I mean, this is like a real color profile kind of problem yeah. where like, you know, you have one photo that's the same everywhere, but it looks different everywhere. And, yep. and so it's the same thing again. Uh, we've got the pixel sort of really going crazy on the colors, um, making the greens way more green, the blues way, way more blue. But the iPhone is much more muted. But interestingly, it's blowing out the detail on the flowers yeah. a little bit. Yeah, so it it's actually, pumping up the contrast. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we noticed that in the last one, but I think the difference here is that the Pixel's photo of this scene wasn't as contrasty. It, it was yes. a more, uh, it had more dynamic range, mm -hmm. and the iPhone didn't quite nail that as much, and so the Pixel is sort of exacerbating it because its screen is punching up the right. colors and the contrast, and so it's making a, it's taking a problem and making it worse. To, to Yes, to your point earlier, if the information isn't there, it's not there. Right. So removed from all that sort of phone screen trickery, uh, now we're looking at those same two images here on the Retina MacBook, um, and I think a pretty wild difference in the sense of wow. like the Pixel's image actually looks flatter, <laughs> and way flatter, and not as saturated as it did on the phone, which is super weird. It, it feels like we got flipped. I actually almost called like thought I was looking at one and not the other, and. The iPhone has sort of greener greens and more purpley purples and... But it's much um, more blown out. It's blowing out the color. Yeah. This is, yeah, it's a really this strange This is remarkable. Difference. So clearly the screens are actually that last stage of punching the color. Yeah. Because the pixel, this image here, the colors are basically more muted. You know what it's like? It's almost like we're looking at the pixel in neutral mode. And then <laughs> when I'm looking on the screen, it's enhanced mode, right? Yeah. It's the punchy mode. So and in I mean, a way, maybe that, maybe that even makes sense. Yeah, and as far as like how the pictures stack up against each other, I think the Pixel really got this one yeah. better. I think the iPhone might be a little more pleasing initially just because yeah. there's a bit more color there. It's also a little bit warmer and a little bit greener in mm -hmm. that sense, not just that there's green in the image, but in the way that it tends to apply those sort of casts to the yeah. image, this sort of like haze of uh, warm colors and green colors, but the Pixel obviously much more muted, much so cooler, muted. but like just way better detail. Um, again, it didn't lose the detail in the um, the highlight detail in the highlights, as well as just the sharpness, like the detail of the actual like subject, like the actual it's flowers incredible. in here. Uh, it, much more rich. This is it feels like. Well, it's it blowing. Totally. It's blowing out. It can't hold these tones on the yeah. on the highlights. Yeah, I mean, on the flowers, like... it's like actually. And this wasn't. It's not like I took them in different settings, like where the sun was out in the. It just really read. It, this read a muted scene well, mm -hmm. uh, and the iPhone sort of didn't and kind of missed it. So, so we haven't talked about one of the sort of flagship features for some of these phones yet, um, because not all of them have it, and that's right. portrait mode. Um, 
And so the ones we're talking about here, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, the iPhone 10, and the Pixel 2 XL. Uh, so this is just one portrait mode photo. We're not gonna go into a whole bunch of them. This is, I think, probably the most representative of yes. the things that we saw a lot with portrait mode on the different phones, um, which is that the iPhone tends to create probably softer, maybe less sharp looking yes. portrait mode photos. And in, it's more progressive. Yeah, and, the, and then the, the depth that it's sort of creating by blurring some of the background. Yeah, it yeah. seems more progressive. It feels more like it's trying to, and doing a good job of recreating the sort of blur that happens is, uh, you know, towards the back of the image. Yes. Whereas the Pixel, I think in most photos, has better edge detection than the iPhone X. It mm -hmm. is finding the sort of seams around a person's head or their hair or whatever the subject might be, even if it's not a person. It's finding those seams better and sort of cutting around them better. But the part of the problem with that is like, it's doing that and then immediately just blurring everything else. Yes. And it makes everything feel like a cardboard cutout, which is aggressive in some images and not yeah. in others. And so I think the Pixel's portrait mode like might wow a little bit more from time to time, but I actually wish it did more of that sort of progressive blurring um, that made it look like it was coming out of an yeah. actual sort of like uh, SLR camera kind of thing. I, I think that having seen these now, I mean, the the Samsung is so, it's got the washy, <laughs> it's got the warm. It does it does what it does. Yeah, I mean, the, so the Note 8, again, like it, it's aggressively smoothing the features on his face. It's uh, it sort of missed the exposure. It does the it handles the blurring kind of well. One thing I love about the Samsung that I wish the other two phones would adopt is you can, yes. uh, while you're shooting or after you've shot a portrait mode photo, slide yeah. um, to adjust how much blur there is. Uh, on the Pixel, you can sort of toggle it on and off, which is nice, but I, I wish there was uh, that feature on the iPhone. I feel like yeah. Apple's never gonna not believe fully in its ability to get it right, so we're never gonna get it. But. And it and it and it's, it's so dependent on the picture that you take. I mean, one of the good reasons to use this is there's so much detail in the background. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you have a cleaner background, then all of the cameras do a better job. Yeah, and I think one thing to note about the way the iPhone does portrait mode is it seems to really I think it's sort of like almost cheating in a way that when it knows it's got a face, it really tries to keep the focus yeah. on the face. And it's even blurring his shirt yeah. where like that maybe, I don't know, with a really thin aperture, like a really good portrait lens, like that would happen if it was really, we were working with really small depth of field. But you know, like I think that looks makes more sense to me on the Samsung photo or even the Pixel photo where like his shirt should be in focus. Like maybe not as cardboard cutout he is, yeah. the Pixel did it, but, um, but I think the Pixel did, better detail and better color representation here. The iPhone always skews a little warm, um, like we've seen in most mm -hmm. photos, but especially in portraits. And, and that warm kind of greeny cast, I think gives a weird feeling when I'm looking at someone's <laughs> face. Uh, I, I just don't like that they apply that there. Um, so I think it handles the portrait mode a little bit better. Yes. Uh, but it still has some of the problems that I have with um, the, the way that the iPhones software processing is being applied to the it, It's images. really funny that having used these phones so much, having being the owner of a Pixel, I never use portrait mode. Yeah, I've well, just never so it's a good gateway into it. like some of the other things we should talk about with these, because it's not just about having like sort of the best camera that captures the best detail in every mm -hmm. scenario. That's great, obviously, and I think if we're talking about just that, I think the Pixel 2 XL wins. I think the yes. I think the Pixel from last year would probably beat out most of these phones <laughs> in certain situations. So I, the 2 XL, I think, and the software team that they have pumping over at Google to make the most out of the hardware that they have, mm -hmm. you know, only having one lens, not two, and, and all that, is just they're just crushing it, and they are again a sort of step ahead of the pack when it comes to just like image quality in every situation and being consistent with it. Yeah. Um, one thing I don't like about the Pixel 2 XL and its portrait mode is that it's buried in the sort of hamburger menu and you like yeah. you can't just easily access it. It's easy to forget that it's there as far as like the UI that's goes. Probably why I don't use it. It's probably forget. yeah, I think that's probably part of it. Um, but you can go too far on the Note 8. The their version of portrait mode is called live focus and it is mm -hmm. right under the shutter button all the time, which makes it feel like you're always in portrait mode even though you're not. You mm -hmm. have to tap it even though it looks like a swipe. Uh, and that is mind boggling to you me. Hate it is, that. I hate that. And I also hate that on the Samsung, it shows you what lens you can switch to. So it says yes. X2 for the telephoto lens, but on the iPhone, that means that you would be in that lens. And it's just, it feels so yeah, backwards, it's so to, backwards me. to me. And I think 
that's another big difference here. Like software across all these is wildly different. Um, and we're just talking the sort of stock camera apps for these phones. Cool. One thing that I think um, the Samsung does the best out of all the rest of them is uh, it still to me is the quickest yes. camera. And, I, and by that, I mean it's the quickest camera. When I take it out of my phone, I can double tap the power button and the camera is just up and ready to shoot. Um, the HTC, the Pixel will also do that uh, if you tap, double tap the power buttons. Um, I don't think they're quite as fast, and Samsung's autofocus is still really mm -hmm. fast, so I think probably still a class above the others, especially during video. Um, and so I think that's probably still the fastest. It's, it's real small, though, the difference between that <laughs> and like the HTC. Um, and it's something that I wish the iPhone would really address. I wish there was just a way to, to launch the camera easier. I would still hate swiping over to the camera because mm -hmm. I never get it right 100% of the time. And the new sort of 3D touch button on the 10 at least it puts it in a place where I know I can find it, but like, I just, I wish I had a hardware button. Honestly, I think the most, the fastest I've ever launched a camera app on a smartphone is the uh, sort of S7 and older yeah. category of, of them. I remember those the big tests. home button, and it was just it was so much better. Okay, so we've come to the end of the video. We've been arguing a lot, and now you're expecting us to tell you which is the best camera. We're not gonna do that. Actually, yes, we are. It's the Pixel. I, so uh, no, no, whoa, 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 <laughs> no, because I think the Pixel is doing things that is uh, more impressive than some of the other things. I think they have a, a better lead <laughs> on the rest of the smartphones as far as their cameras, and I think they can take it to more interesting places. Uh, this is a surprise. I think the iPhone is right there with it, if not a little behind it. Um, I love the versatility of a second lens, and we tested this on the Circuit Breaker show. The telephoto lens is still like worth oh, yeah. using over just cropping in on like the Pixel 2's image. There is a quality difference, so I like that. Um, and I do like some things that the iPhone does, like live photos. You can reselect an image now, so if you just miss the moment, you can pick the one that you that you should have had. Uh, and it also does some interesting software stuff, like long exposure simulations with live photos now. So I think Apple's got some advantages over the Pixel. Uh, I think just like hands down, most consistent, gonna always give you the best photo in most situations, I don't think you can say it isn't the Google Pixel 2 X. I own it. I get it. <laughs> but I was just trying to be the most sort of... Diplomatic. Diplomatic. I yeah. mean, there are times, and I think that this is the point, there are times when an iPhone is going to be better. There's times when the HTC U11 is going to be better. There are There's times. times, maybe not when the Note 8 is going to be better. Um, or the LG, but I think we have three You're that right. are sort of in a class no, above I the others, it. and then these are the sort of best that are out there, which is why we picked them in the first place. Exactly. We're going to have way more comparisons on the website, so make sure you go find the this smartphone camera comparison there, uh, where I'll have uh, just way more detail than we could fit in this video. Um, so look for that. Head to youtube.com slash The Verge. Click subscribe if you're not already, which like at the end of this video, like what are you doing if you're not? Uh, and thanks for watching. Thank you. Just the amount of... What's the word I'm thinking of? I have no idea. Please tell me. Uh, oh my god. Why am I blacking out?